Hey everyone, I'm going to be telling you about parallax today and more specifically how we can use parallax to measure distances to nearby stars. So if you go to my previous videos, you will know that we can use radar for short distances, meaning distances within the solar system. And then if we want to measure longer distances in astrophysics, we can use parallax, okay? So up to nearby stars, I can use parallax. Now, parallax by definition is when you have an object that is um, closer to other things uh, that you have um, nearby, or how I'm going to explain it all, all over again. So I actually will use this. So this is parallax. I'm here and I'm traveling in the car and enjoying the nice view. And as you can see, I can see some cows every so often, right? And they seem to move. And then um, the mountains and the hill at the back, they don't seem to move at all, okay? So objects nearby, they seem to move in relation to the background. And the further the objects are, the less fast they seem to be moving in my line of sight, OK? Or out of my line of sight. Um, so this is parallax. So the same happens when the sun and the Earth are moving in relation to, this, uh, to each other. Now we're thinking about the Earth moving around the sun, okay? Uh, and what happens is, imagine that I have all these stars. I have the distant stars, the blue, the um, uh, faint yellow, the pink and the bright yellow, and I have my white nearby star. As I move around the sun, what is going to happen is this nearby star seems to move as you can see here, as you're from the telescope, seems to move in relation to the other stars, the background stars. The background stars, which are here uh, mentioned as the distant stars, they are so far away, they don't, do, they don't seem to move at all, okay? And this is stellar parallax, okay? Because it's uh, really about the stars, so it's a parallax that happens when you have the stars, okay? So, parallax effect. So, as we travel along the orbit around the sun in one year, some stars seem to shift their positions against the background stars. So, I have here me in January and me in July. In January, I see the star A and B quite close together. But if I wait six months in July, star A now seems to be away from star B, but very close to star C. Okay, so as I say, the shifting, the shifting of position against a fixed background is what we call the parallax, and we can use it to estimate the distances of the star, in this case star A, um, using the parallax, okay? So for that, we need to know what parallax angle is. So this is me going around the sun again, and as an approximation, I'm going to assume that I go around the sun in a very circular orbit, meaning that I always have the same distance from the sun. That's actually not true, but we are going to assume that our distance uh, to the sun is always going to be one astronomical unit, okay? which is the average distance between us and the sun. So something to the 10 to the power of 15 meters, I believe. I think so. Uh, but it's in a couple of videos ago, I think it's 3.11 or 3.15 times 10 to the power of 15. But do check on the previous videos, OK? So that's me, OK? And that's the nearby star. Now, in total, this is the angular distance that my star moves. So from one side of the triangle to the other. My parallax angle is going to be half of that, OK? So the parallax angle is, by definition, half of the angle moved by the star in that time, in those six months, OK? Now, the parallax angles, how do they change with distance? So imagine that I have this star. Imagine that I have a star here and another star there. You can see already, by figuring out where the parallax angles would be, you can see already that the parallax angles are going to be smaller the greater the distance. Or, as it says here in the answer, the col closer the star, the greater the parallax angle, OK? So the further away the star is, the smaller the parallax angle is going to be. How big are the parallax angles? They are going to be quite tiny, okay? Very, very small. Because the stars are much further away to the Earth than the Earth comparing to the Sun, okay? So these angles are tiny angles. 
So for me to be able to measure the distance d from the star using the parallax angle and the astronomical unit, I need to know how to measure these angles. Now they are so small that I cannot even use degrees. I need to use what I call the arc second or the second of arc, okay? So they are going to be fractions of degrees, okay? So the second of arc, the way that I do it is by doing the following. I have a full circle, so I have 360 degrees, okay? If I go to one degree in that circle and I divide it by 60, I get one arc minute. So I get 60 minutes of one arc in one degree, so I get one arc minute. If I divide this arc minute further, then I'll get one arc second or one second of an arc. So that's the 60 seconds in there, okay? So that means that a second of arc or one arc second is going to be, this is the symbol by definition, one and then two of these things, and it is equal to one over 3,600 of a degree, okay? And I'm going to put this link in the description which is um, a lady explaining how you get to the second of arc, okay? So this is quite an actually good video and useful video. So there it is. In case you want to skip it entirely, you need to know this part that says that a second of an arc is going to be one over 3,600 of a degree, okay? So from there, I can define what a parsec is. And we spoke about parsec, parsecs when we mentioned about the, the distances. So the parsec is about 3.1 uh, times 10 to the power of minus, uh, not minus, sorry, to the power of 13 or 16. Uh, so actually, the, the astronomical unit is 1.5, and I'll say 3.1. So the parsec is, by definition, when I have an object that the parallax angle is one second of an arc or one arc second, then that object is at a distance of one parsec. So one parsec is when I would have one arc second, okay? Now, since bigger angles mean smaller distances and smaller angles means a greater distance, an object that is at a parallax angle of two seconds of an arc or two arc seconds is therefore going to be at a distance of 0.5 parsec. On the other hand, if I would have an object that a parallax angle would be 0.5 arc seconds, then the distance would be two parsecs from that star, okay? So here we go. The parsec is 3.1 times 10 to the power of 13 kilometers or 3.1 times 10 to the power of uh, 16 meters. So that means that when I was saying the astronomical unit is going to be 1.5 times 10 to the power of um, 11 meters, I think. Please go on the units of distance uh, because I don't really have to know them by heart. And the light year, one at light year, because sometimes it's easier than saying 0.5 parsec, I can just say in light years. So one night light year is going to be 9.5 times 10 to the power of 12 kilometers or 9.5 times 10 to the power of 15 meters, okay? So when I measure the distances between our neighboring stars, they are at about few parsec, okay? Um, most times we use light years. For example, we this big news about this star that has uh, seven planets um, around the size of the Earth around it. We are saying that the star is at uh, 40 light years, which would be about 12 parsec. So we normally use light years for stars really, and then we can use parsec for other distances. But it's up to you, whatever you use, as long as you use the right units. So now that I know how to measure the angles in uh, arc seconds, I can tell you what the formula to calculate the distances are, is, okay? So the distance for my star in parsecs is going to be equal to one over the parallax angle in arc seconds, okay? so my distance is going to be one over this p, this parallax angle, all right? How did I get to this formula? So I have this angle. I know that this opposite angle is going to be one astronomical unit, and this is the distance that I want to figure out, the distance from the star. So I had a hypotenuse in this triangle, which is a 90-degree triangle. 
So I know that by definition, the sine of P, the parallax angle, is going to be equal to one astronomical unit over the distance. So that means that the distance to my star is going to be one over the sine of P. Now, because I have tiny angles, remember, I'm talking about arc seconds. So that's going to be one over 3,600 of degrees, right, of a degree. So, because these angles are so small, I can do the approximation of saying that the distance is going to be 1 over P by itself. So, 1 over the angle in arc seconds that I, my star seems to move in 6 months, okay? So, that's the um, demo for the formula. If you want, you can use the sine of P, but really it's basically going to give you the same thing if you do just 1 over P, okay? So, what we need to remember from what I told you so far. The astronomical uh, distances in the solar system, which are quite nearby objects, we can use uh, radar to measure them, okay? Where the distance is going to be the speed times the time, but the time needs to be divided by two because I need to send a pulse and then wait for the pulse of radio waves to reflect and come back. So that's why I divide the time by two. Distances to nearby stars can be found by parallax. But then, larger distances, I need to use a different way to measure them because my parallax angles are going to be so tiny that I either cannot measure or the star doesn't seem to move at all um, in relation to the background stars because it's a background star. So for larger distances, I need to estimate by using the apparent brightness. So how bright that star appears to be from Earth, okay? Um, so from when we look at it and on Earth, okay? I can use standard candles like Cepheid variable, star luminosities and type 1a supernova, which are going to be in um, some videos following, okay? Whatever I do, there is always some uncertainty, okay? The more I go down in this list, the bigger the uncertainty gets because the radar is pretty much spot on. The parallax, I have a couple of approximations there, but they are tiny if you think about the distances that I'm talking, so that's all right. Larger distances, we're going to have a little bit of a bigger uncertainty, but still, our results are pretty good, okay? So, what is the problem about using parallax angles? So, as I gave away already from the previous slides, I can make these measurements of parallax angles to check the distance of the stars, but this only works for stars that are relatively nearby, okay? If they are very far away, what is going to happen is that I cannot even measure the parallax angle. So what I can do is, why don't I think about how the object seems to be in terms of brightness or apparent magnitude, which is what I'm talking about, how the object seems to be from Earth. So, the more distance the star is, the fainter the light is going to be, to be on Earth, as the light from the star spreads outwards. So, that means that the observed brightness of a star gives us an indication of the distance. So, that would be great. I would just assume if the star is faint, is far away, and if a star is bright, is close by. Think about the sun. The sun looks super bright, and actually, we know that it's not that bright. So, we could use that, right? Yeah, but then there is a problem. What happens is, oh, and there, where is this coming from? Sorry, so I forgot to tell you something. This is coming from, so think about always the same area from the surface of the sphere or the surface from uh, the sun, for example, of a star. So at the distance of R, I have a certain amount of radiation passing through that area. But at a, twice the distance, so one R, now, I have the same amount of radiation, but now passing through uh, four of the same of the area. So the intensity divides by four, the intensity of the light that I get. And after three times the distance, now I have nine squares here. So that same, the rays are now spread over an area that is nine times bigger. So the intensity is one over nine, okay? By definition, the intensity of the surface is going to be the source strength divided by 4 pi r square. This formula is going to be a little bit altered for us in astrophysics. Wait um, until the next video, I think, and I'll show you how it changes, okay? So that would be great. I could simply say, going back one slide now, I could simply say, all right, I just see the apparent magnitude of the stars. Look at what apparent magnitude is in a lesson that I have that in the... Um, 
in the title, and I can simply just use on how bright the star seems to be to decide if it's close or far, and then the fainter it is, the further away it is, right? However, stars happen to differ in size and in temperature, so that means that they radiate different amount of energy. So not all stars are identical, therefore not all stars radiate the energy at the same rate and their brightness is going to be different for the same distance. So although this would be a great idea, I could not use it to measure the distance of the star. So I need to figure something out. Drum roll, you need to wait for another video. So. Just in case you don't remember, observed brightness, so what an observer seems, sees from Earth depends on the star's distance and the star's luminosity. This is going to be the key word next time that I tell you about how you measure the distances, okay? So I can say that the flux that I get here is equal to the power that the star gives divided by 4 pi distance squared. Look, that this is just a formula that I had in a previous slide, however, I'm now changing uh, some of the words, flux, power, and distance squared. I'm even going to change these words further, okay? Just wait for it. I know it's a big suspense, but you need to wait. Now, other thing that I have, another problem that I have is that I do have dust and gas in between the Earth and the stars. So this dust and gas, it can absorb some of the energy or some of the light and therefore I also have a different idea of how the star seems to be in terms of brightness from Earth. But that's something that I cannot do much about it, at least at the moment, okay? So, we know in the solar system I can use radar, I know that nearby stars I need to use in parallax, I know that once the stars start to be very far, parallax angles are going to be so tiny that I cannot use them to measure the distance. I could pick the star's brightness as seen from Earth, so the apparent magnitude, However, different stars will have different amount of energies that they are um, sending out and therefore I cannot really just use that, okay? I need to figure something out. But that's going to be for another video. So wait for my next video to see how we get around uh, on this problem to figure out the distance of uh, objects that I have such a small parallax angle that I cannot even measure it to figure out the distance. In the meantime, I'm leaving you here with some questions in case you want to try them. So pause the video and try the questions, okay? I'm not going to read them from you uh, for you because you can definitely see them in here. Um, so these are the questions and then these are the answers. So uh, number one is obviously on the board, uh, on the board, it's, uh, you cannot see it, but I can do it on the board, but you know, just go back on the parallax uh, effect slide and you will see there, oopsie, sorry. Um, but I have here the parasec is bigger, I have here the distances, I have the answers for three, and I have the distances in parsec and in light years for the last question, okay? So again, pause the video because I will obviously take this out now, but pause the video and check if your answers are correct. I hope this was clear. This is going to get even more exciting uh, when we figure out how to measure other distances. And I'll see you in, ooh, there's something, a telling sign in here. And I'll see you next time. So bye, take care.